Okay people, this is himself. Welcome to another Tekken 7 King Guide. In this video, we're going to look at his new move in Season 4. I'm going to show you Oki, applications and a secret technique for landing that just frame every single time. So King's new move is back 3 into 1 plus 2, aka guillotine drop. This is a total of 43 damage, so it's an extra 20 on top of the tall kick. Now once it lands, they're face up feet away, so it's a great position for OK. Your best follow up is Alley Kick. This is everything but silo right, and I think Namco did this on purpose. They didn't want to give us 50 plus damage, because otherwise, people would complain. They'd say, oh, it's OP, King is OP, Season 4 is bad. So at least this way, they have a way out. To cover that, we have D4. This is everything but back rolls and staying down. If you get a hard read on that, then you can use ground flows. It is a bit awkward because it takes an age to recover, but you can do it. Beyond that, we can use DF12. This is back rollers, wake up kicks, and also side roll left. It also hits standards, and in this case, we get a mix up. Back in Season 3, this would only be plus 3, but now it's plus 5, so D2 is guaranteed. We can also use throws against people who hold back. Giant Swing will give you Giant Swing, the Stretch Buster becomes Muscle Buster. Either way, both can do over 50 damage and the hands look the same. To stop people ducking, we can use F2-1. This can be blocked and the second it can be ducked, so you do have to be careful. Speaking of F2-1, this can also be used with the leg drop. Just like DF1-2, it beats wake up kicks and it also hits standards and back rollers. If you get a hard beat on standards, you can actually use the other ender and get a launch. One last option is back throw. You can't use stretch buster because it won't reach, but the generic one will. Against back rollers, that's what you get, but against standards, it's unescapable. And on top of that, alley kick is guaranteed. Now knowing this Oki is all good, but what we need to know is how to use the move in the first place. Now the obvious way is as a punisher. There's loads of moves out there that are minus 16 and have pushback, so this is the perfect place to do it. What's also great is that it's easy. You're already holding back, so all you have to do is hit 3 and the move will come out. And it's the same story with his other punishers. The second way of using it is aggressively. Obviously in neutral there are better options out there, but what you can do is couple it with the push. On count hits, this is plus 18, so tall kick is guaranteed, and you don't even need to be frame perfect. Now if you're wondering about the damage, then there's no scaling, so you get that 43, and that means that this outclasses F21, which was the old go-to option. The only time you wouldn't use tall kick is when you're in rage, because clothesline into rage drive is still king. So we have Oki okay and we have application, but how do we land that just frame in the first place? Well, there's three ways. The first is learning the timing. The just frame window is 5 frames, so there's some leniency to it. The second is just mashing it out. If you mash it out right, then there's a chance you'll get the input. The problem though is that if you don't, you get 1 plus 2 1 and you look stupid. The third way however is my own personal discovery and it's both easier and way more consistent. What you do is this, back plus 3, tilde 2, hold it in, tilde 1. Now this seems complicated, but it's not. All you do is imagine it to be one command. Don't think of it as two separate inputs, think of it as one string of inputs. And if you do it fast, it will work. Now the reason it works is that 2 tilde 1 helps you get the timing and by holding the two, you're then guaranteed to get one plus two. Now that then raises another question. Does this work with his other just frames? And the answer is yes. Take a look at this, Togek into DDT. Here, you can use the same input. The timing is a little slower, but it does work. What's also good is what happens on block. If you're mashing 1 plus 2, then there's every chance 1 plus 2 will come out by accident. But if you do it my way, the input is hidden in the block animation, so that doesn't happen. Now toe kick is not one of his best moves, but in the right situation, it is damn good. When people are scared of throws, they start to duck, so this becomes your best anti-duck tool. It's 15 frames, safe on block, does 38 damage, and an alley kick is guaranteed. 
and it also has psychological damage because that long animation basically says to them, I caught you ducking and this is your punishment. Now is there another just frame that King has? Yes, net cutter. This is from his mule kick and the same input works. Now back turn 3 is not a move that you'll use often, but there is one place, wall combo. People might get up here and duck, and that's to avoid the unblockable, so the mule kick screws them over. If you land it and the just frame, which you now should, you get OK. The best option is probably D4, this is both side rolls, wake up kicks and forces standards and back rollers to block low. To cover that we can use DF1, this is safe on block, still beats wake up kicks and it also clips side roll left. What those options don't do is hit people on the ground, so to cover that we have D3, this also hits side roll right and it's only minus 12. What that then leaves is stretch combo, and sadly there's no secret input for this. The other moves are all inputs on impact, but this one is at a particular moment, so my suggestion is to identify the frame window and just mash it out. In fact, the next thing you should do is check out my ultimate tackle guide, cause King has the second best tackle in the game and you might as well learn about it. Looking ahead, I will be covering the rest of King's changes in more detail, and this will then be followed by Armor King and Marduk, so keep your eyes peeled for that. In the meantime, have fun, play well, and I'll see you guys in the future.